Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together here in your name, help us to remember that you love us and care for us and that we therefore are empowered to love others the way you have loved us. Thank you, Lord, for letting all the people be here and let freedom ring, which is only possible through our Lord and Savior. Amen. I don't know how often, even this morning, people have told me in one way or the other, this country is really in bad shape. And here we are on Independence Day, celebrating our independence when there are so many indications in this world that there is no independence at all. That there are many people who wish there were independence, they wish they could go back, but when the reality strikes them, it strikes them in the face so hard that they're unable to actually do anything about their hopes and dreams. And so today, rather than going with the gospel, which I normally preach, I'm going to preach on Galatians, not the chapter that was read, but actually the fifth chapter of Galatians. And in the fifth chapter of Galatians, we begin to get a sense of the fact that our problems really aren't new. In fact, the last verse in Judges, it says, in those days there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. May I read that again? And when I read it, would you think through whether you are a, one of those persons who does everything that was right in his own eyes? Let me read it again. In those days, the days of the judges, there was no king. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And there was chaos. When you and I are, are in a sense, looked at as the only people who have any right to say anything, we're going to have chaos. Or to say it in another way, we are going to have chaos in this world if we do not listen to our Lord and Savior and love our fellow men. And so the first verse that we must recognize is that in those days there was no king in Israel and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Now, you may not think that's a bad idea. After all, what is freedom? Freedom is to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. I remember when I was a brash, well, maybe I still am a brash, when I was a brash guy in, in seventh grade, the teacher in seventh grade uh, gave me detention for various things that I had done. In fact, he was so clear about the fact that I deserved detention that he just at the every end of the, the six weeks, he would write me a slip for me to go into detention because he knew I had done something wrong. And so here I am, Independence Day, freedom, and we so often succumb to the notion that once we just identify ourselves as Christians, everything is fine. Or as Americans, everything is fine. But I question your decision to think that everything is fine. And let me talk about that a little bit more. The present day and maybe you disagree, and if you do, I'd be glad to talk with you or have you convince me. But in the present day, there is a notion that you and I can live any way you want to as long as we're true to ourselves. As long as we believe what we're doing, nobody should tell us what to do. And that particular point of view is actually a Satan working in our lives. We cannot do what we want to do. In fact, we, a few weeks ago when we talked about abortion, it became clear, I hope, it became clear that in fact we do not have a right 
to live the way we want to live. We have a right to live the way God wants us to live. But let's talk about that a little bit more, and that is to turn to Galatians, the fifth, the fifth chapter. And the first thing that we read there in the fifth chapter is, for freedom Christ has set us free. It's a gift. Our freedom is a gift. It makes no difference where we are or where we live. If we're free, it's a gift, and we have to treat it as a gift rather than as a right. Now, from a legal point of view, there are certain things that we can always assert as if we had a right to it. For example, in the law, there are, three things, there are only three things you need to learn. I don't know why they make you go through three years of law school, but there are only three things you need to know. One is, what are your rights? The second one is, what are your privileges? And the third one is, what remedy is there when somebody destroys your rights? Now that sounds really simple, but if you look at most of the, the cases that have been studied, they fit right into one or more of those patterns. You see, the secular perspective is completely, has completely taken over the, the view in fact, there is no such thing in, from a secular perspective as a right or as a wrong. Have you noticed something? There has never been a bill of responsibilities. We have a bill of rights. We have a bill of rights that you and I uh, to, ought to avail ourselves of. The, the founding fathers underlined the fact that we have rights, but there is nothing in, this, in the Constitution about our responsibilities. And this is where you and I need to talk a little bit about. We need to talk a little bit about the fact that in our society, it's easy for us to claim that we have rights but no responsibilities. So that when the argument is made that someone has a right, it's never right versus wrong anymore. It's not what is right and what is wrong. It, rather, it is what is right versus another's rights. What's the right of the fetus? What's the right of the mother? What's the right of the children? What's the right of the grandparents? They all are focused on the rights that we have. But that's not what Scripture talks about. Scripture talks about it in a very different way. It talks about rights being a gift. And we need to understand that, not only in terms of the judges, but in terms of what the chapter reads. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Is that clear? Is it clear that in Scripture, you and I need to ask the question, what is it? that scripture demands of us. We have a tendency to think that if we do what we want to do and if we sort of live responsible lives, that's enough. But nowhere in scripture is that stated in such a way. Rather, Jesus said, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything but only faith working through love. Or in another place, for you were called for freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You see, the secular perspective about freedom is that we are free to serve our fellow neighbors. You and I are free not to, do, to sort of uh, indulge ourselves in the flesh, but we are free to serve our neighbor. Now, what does it mean to serve the flesh? The way I like to remember that is if you take the word flesh and you knock the word H, the letter H off, and spell it backwards, you have self. 
Because that's what, what Paul is saying in this particular letter to the Galatians. He is basically saying that he himself calls his people and calls us through scripture. How? He calls us to be servants of one another. Servants of one another. You know the most beautiful things that happen in this congregation is when people come to their aid. I have a flat tire in the, in the car. Kara noticed it. And uh, without anybody saying anything, there was a gentleman who does so much in this congregation who uh, is going to fix that tire for us. That's when we are at our best. We are at our best when we do not focus on ourself, but focus on Jesus Christ and what he requests of us. So it is important in this fifth chapter to recognize that the secular perspective is to do whatever you can. Do it for yourself. The biblical perspective is to do that which God wants us to do, which is to love our neighbor. That's the law. That's the real law that Jesus Christ himself exemplified. Now, one more thing. You and I are to love one another, which means that we love God through others and for others. You see, what we can proclaim today as Independence Day, Freedom Day, is nothing compared to what Christ is calling us to do, which is to love one another as he loved us. Amen.